gonna be going through this orange yellow fantasy moment hair matching makeup moment whatever you want to call it this is the look that we're going for today if you want to see this look keep watching because it's been a while since i've done like a normal get ready with me obviously now i use like a lot of different products so i just thought it'd be a good idea to like jump on camera and do my makeup before i go to work i'm gonna do my makeup a little bit extra so it's not a boring video before i sit down to do my makeup i always apply a little bit of the maracuja oil from Tarte. i just apply like three drops i'll put a drop here drop here drop on the forehead apply it all over the face and then i'll wait like five ten minutes something like that before i actually go in with my primer so no matter where i'm going or what i'm doing this is always my first step to prime my face i'm using this matte cream so this is the product. I'm just showing it you because I can never pronounce it, basically. So I only apply a little bit. To even out my texture a little bit more, I do have a few like more open pores in this area. I apply the NYX Pore Filler and I literally just use the smallest amount. I basically put the product on one fingertip and then go like this and apply it here. I think before, I used to apply way too much of this product. Actually, I think in general, I used to have a problem with applying too much product. I used to apply too much foundation as well. I always go in with a little bit of foundation on my forehead first, then I work from like brows down. The foundation that I've been using recently is still the Urban Decay All Nighter foundation, but I also mix it with a little bit of this L'Oreal foundation as well. I used to wear this foundation in shade 0.5 or 1, but now I'm going up in the world and I'm on shade two. Mama got a tan. And then this one, I'm now using shade 12. So I just mix a little bit of this and like one pump of this together. As usual, I always just buff this in with my beauty blender. I feel like this is a product that I probably don't really need to use anymore, um, but I'm kind of in the habit and routine of using it. And also I live in Dubai, I live in a hot country. So I like to just have that extra reassurance that my eyebrows are gonna stay on all day. I mainly just focus this product on the corner where I actually shave my brows off, just so my products have something extra to stick to. I really, really love these pencils from NYX. It's the eyebrow powder pencils. I just think they're amazing. What I find with eyebrow pencils is that they normally have a quite like waxy texture. Um, which is probably good if you have a lot of eyebrow hair already because then the product can like cling to the hair but I don't have much eyebrow hair and obviously I have no hair on the tail so I find a really waxy product hard to work with like when I kind of put it on it just seems to leave like patches etc but these don't like this is a really soft powdery formula and it's just one of my favorite eyebrow pencils. People always ask like, oh, why do you shave off the tail, etc.?" Because my eyebrow hair grows quite low. So let me try and do an example with this brush. My eyebrow hair grows like down here. So if I wanted a high arch, there would be loads of like hair here, or I wouldn't be able to draw in this like fake high arch. Obviously, if you have like beautiful natural brows, this is not a concern for you, but I really like to have that like, you know, that kind of brow. What's really funny is that the way that I do makeup on like my clients or the way that I do makeup at work is like almost the complete opposite to what I do on myself. Once I've finished with the pencil, I like to go in with a pomade. I'm now using the Kat Von D one. Here's a little tip for you. The last time I used this brush, I obviously used like an orange pigment for my brows, but I clean my eyebrow brush every day just because it gives you like a sharp, precise line. I think if you've got a lot of product like gunked up in your brush, it's gonna be impossible to get like carved out brows. If that's the look that you're trying to achieve anyway. When you're using a concealer to correct brows or lipstick, I would always use a cream concealer and not a liquid one because the cream formula is gonna kind of cut through the products a little bit more. 
So it's gonna help you get that neater line. Then I just take like a eyeshadow blending brush, but I keep this one purely just to blend out my concealer. So I blend this out first and then I apply my eyeshadow primer. When it comes to eyeshadow primer, I kind of rotate between three different ones. I always keep them on my makeup desk and basically I just grab whatever's closest. One of those primers is the Urban Decay Eden Primer. Another one is the P. Louise Base and I use shade one. And then the other one is this concealer from Revolution. Like, I think this works really well as an eyeshadow base. So that's like three different options in three different price ranges. Today I'm just gonna use the concealer. So this brush that I use is like double-ended. I think it was, I think it came in a um, Urban Decay palette. It's like a blending brush on one side and then a flatter brush on the other. What I normally do is use the flat side of the brush to kind of pat on my product and then I'll use my finger just to tap it in a little bit. To set my eyeshadow, I always use a little bit of this highlighter from uh, Kat Von D. It's a matte textured powder because under my brow, I like to have a lighter than skin tone highlight, but I don't want it to be white, basically. Now I'm gonna move on to my eyeshadow. I'm gonna be using the Morphe 35B palette. So first I'm just gonna lay down the red shade and you see I'm just kind of like patting it on. I'm not swiping, I'm not doing like a, I'm not doing this motion. I'm just kind of packing it on there. The brush that I'm using is actually a brush from the Girls With Attitude brush set. It doesn't have a number on it or anything. Um, so I don't know exactly which one, but it comes in a little set. And I do have a discount code for Girls With Attitude. It'll be in the description box below. It's always in the description box below all of my videos. I do have quite a few discount codes for brands, but I don't really like push them a lot because I think that you will think that I'm just doing it for like money or something like that and that's not true. The brands that I have codes for are brands that I've worked with for years or I loved their products for years and then we started to have like a working relationship so check out the codes that I do have, feel free to use them, it's not something that I'm going to push on you guys. Even though you do save money, so it's not, it's not a bad thing for you. To soften this blend, I'm just using the orange shade from that palette. So I've smoked that out with a little bit of orange, and then I'm just going to use this fluffier brush, just to blend a little bit of yellow through that. And then I'm gonna go back in with the red shade just to intensify it. One thing I've been quite afraid of is like blending up my eyeshadows too high, but it's actually like a big trend on Instagram to have eyeshadow, like intense eyeshadow really high up. So I'm gonna just try and like loosen up a little bit and not be a grandma and blend my eyeshadow a little bit higher. But it actually scares me to do that. Honestly, with all the looks that I see trending on Instagram they are all drag looks they are drag like when I do drag makeup they're the looks that I'm doing like the big cut creases that come right up and all that for me because I'm a professional makeup artist as well I do things like very differently in real life as I would on Instagram or YouTube I feel like at the minute the kind of barrier between drag makeup and glam makeup is there is no barrier anymore it is Y'all are just wearing drag every day. I always end up doing this. I kind of like over blend my eyeshadows. I like smoke them out a little bit too much. And then I want to go back in and just kind of redefine the difference in color so that it's red, orange, and then you can see the yellow blend. I know a lot of people actually don't work like this in eyeshadow now, um, especially with a lot of the looks that I see on Instagram. But to be honest, I find that the Instagram style of like eyeshadow I find it really hard to do like I don't know if it's like just an age thing or if it's because all these years I've been kind of brought up to do makeup a different way but I really struggle with that solid intense like eyeshadow because for me in my heart like I just want to blend everything out like to a, a fine smoke but now the trend is to like have the colors like visible and I honestly like I kind of struggle with that I think it looks incredible but me personally, I struggle with doing that. It's definitely something I want to get into more, but 
as of right now, it is something that I struggle with. On the outer corner of this eye, I want it to be like really intense red, like solid red. So what I'm gonna use is this Kat Von D Brow Pomade. Brow pomades, eyeliner gels, etc. In my eyes, it's all a similar product. So if you look at these and think like, oh my God, I could never buy those. Like, I don't want red eyebrows, I could never use those. Yes, you can. It's just a cream color basically that dries like super intense. So you can use this as eyeshadow base, you can blend it out as eyeshadows. You can use it obviously on the brows like it was intended. You could use it for liner. A product like this, don't be afraid of it. You can literally use it for anything. So I've just applied that to the outer corners and then I'm just gonna kind of drag it through my crease just using the same brush. So now I'm gonna do a kind of half cut crease. I'm not gonna do it really high up. I have hooded lids, so it does make sense to go higher up with it, but I don't care. Like when my eyes are open, like you're not gonna be able to see that anyway. And I'm not doing this look to be all like, oh, on Instagram, like I'm going to work. So I just don't care about bringing it up so high. So to cut that crease, I'm not gonna use concealer. I'm actually just gonna go straight in with the daffodil shade from the Kat Von D Super Brow. So you'll see I'm kind of exaggerating the crease. Cause my crease is much lower down. It's like actually here, but I'm not bringing it super high up. So what I do is bring it solid into the center of my eye and then just kind of use whatever's left on the brush just to kind of like flick it out a little bit. I'm jumping back into the Morphe palette and I'm gonna use this bright yellow and then this kind of shimmery pale yellow on top. I honestly love this shade. It comes out so intense. I think the foils in this palette are amazing. So now I'm just curling my natural eyelashes I always curl them because mine are quite like flat and straight. Then I'm using my mascara. I always use the Marc Jacobs Velvet Noir one. Uh, I really don't know what I would do without false eyelashes. I live for them. Next, I always use like a gel pencil just to tight line under my lash line. For my liner, I'm going in with the NYX Epic Ink Liner. I don't really feel like doing a wing. I think I'm just gonna put enough liner on so that it kind of hides the lash line. I'm just using a little bit of black shadow just to blend this out. Cause I don't wanna do a wing, but then I don't want my eyeliner to just kind of stop. So I'm just using a bit of shadow just to kind of smoke it out on the corner. With my foundation, I'm not doing anything special. I'm literally just bouncing it on with a beauty blender. Also, I'm hoping that today there's not as much background noise in my videos. The noise that you would have heard in the last two videos is from my fridge. It just sometimes makes a lot of noise and it seems to always do it when I'm filming, which is super annoying. For my cream contour, I always just go in with a little bit of this shade from Kat Von D's cream contour palette. I'm also using the Kat Von D 10th anniversary brush as well. I don't put a lot on, as you can see. It's not a big, huge stripe down my face. I just like to use a little bit. Under my eyes, I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury concealer. If you watched my bougie get ready with me, that was the first time that I'd used this concealer and I've honestly been living for it ever since. Under my eyes, I'm using Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I know I look absolutely mad pulling this face, but I like to try and like, stretch out the skin under my eyes as much as possible so that I'm not setting the makeup in any lines. For the rest of my face, I'm using Charlotte Tilbury's Magic Powder. It's a really beautiful powder, actually. I feel like it just gives you an airbrushed finish. Even on my skin that has texture, I feel like it smooths the texture out a lot. For powder contour, I'm just using a little bit of the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. And yes, I'm still using this Freedom palette. Look at the absolute state of it. I use these two as bronzers. Your contour shades should always be a darker tone that's a little bit cooler than your skin, whereas your bronzer should be a warmer tone. Bronzer is to kind of obviously bronze up the skin and make it look tanned and sun-kissed. Contour is to create shadows on the face. So with my bronzer, I kind of bring it from where my contour is and kind of pull it up onto my temples and just a little bit higher on my cheekbones. I know this is the section where like highlighter should go, but don't forget that if you were 
tanned, you're naturally going to tan on the higher points of your face. I also use these two illuminating blushes together as well. I'm literally using like the tiniest bit. To highlight, I'm first going in with the Becca Moonstone. Honestly, this is one of my favourite, more subtle highlighters. This is something that I always do, I don't know why, I just think it really works well. I'm going to go in with a darker highlighter just in between where my contour and highlight is. I feel like it just blends it together much nicer, gives it a smoother finish to the skin instead of being like matte contour and then shiny highlight, it kind of all blends together softly. The shade that I'm using that's a little bit more darker, like warmer tone, is the Amreezy highlighter with Anastasia Beverly Hills. Then lastly to finish off my highlight, I'm using the Becca Pearl highlighter. And I only place this on the really high points of my face. Now my base is finished, I always go in to do my under eye. I'm going to use the Kat Von D product again to go under my eyes and add a really intense red. To smoke out that red a little bit, I'm just using the red from the Morphe palette. For this look, I'm going to do like a ready orange ombre lip. So I'm using Jeffree Star Checkmate and Jeffree Star Flamethrower. So I just kind of roughly pop that in the centre. Then with the darker shade, I'm starting to line my lips. Now the lips are lined, I'm starting to bring the darker lipstick from the outer corners inwards. Then to re-blend that lighter orange colour, I'm just going to pop it on my finger and then just kind of pat it on my lips. So that's pretty much it for this orange inspired makeup look. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!